Welcome, welcome one and all to a new episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. What is this, 116? Is this 116? It's ep- da- Dan has nodded, it's episode 116 of the podcast. That has no significance what number the episode is, but my guest today has all the significance. It's a guest episode. My guest is Julian Simmons. I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. And it did not disappoint. Before we get into the episode, let me plug a couple of things. Number one is the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Tea With Me Podcast. There's a load of people over there. You know, it's like we're at, sometimes I think we're at capacity. And then Dan and Mike just build on like a new extension every time. So we're it's getting bigger and bigger, but it is quite crowded in there. Patreon.com slash Tea With Me Podcast. We do a bonus episode on a Monday. At the minute, I'm on this outdoor tour. So I'm recording episodes on the way to and from home gigs with like com- other comedians. And I know I said to and from home gigs, but sometimes I just like to get there quicker. So we've been doing episodes, like the episode me and Paddy McDonald did when we had to go from Lauren to Ballymena because of a mix-up. And he told me about the UDA, UDA raves. And then also he was getting phone calls from the bride of the wedding and he was telling her we're stuck buying combine harvesters. We do a live stream every Friday, as you may or may not know, a couple of comedians guests on. We stream some Euros matches and we're going to do more of that. It's all happening on patreon.com slash tea with me podcast. Anyway, we are sponsored by Punjana Tea. When I tell you the Thompsons family have been making tea since the 1800s, you might call me a liar. But that's just the reality of the situation. They're not like these Tetley guys. You know these like cartoon Tetley guys with flat caps on, long white robes and glasses? Nerds. The Thompsons family are just a real family who have produ- been producing tea in Belfast since Pussy was a kitten. They get their tea from all over the world. And listen, they're a Belfast family. They're not getting their tea from Belfast. They're getting their tea from the tea fields of India. From all different places around the world. So don't just think they're going to like, you know, an industrial estate in East Belfast to get their tea. They're getting the best tea in the world. The Thompsons family taste all the tea themselves. They have a wee swish around like people taste wine. And the Thompsons family, they they let it sit and then they swish it around and they go, yes. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Punjana is the number one selling tea in Northern Ireland for good reason. We drink it on the podcast. It's good gear. Just go and drink it. Punjana, do you have a discount code or anything? They're like, no. The Thompson family said, just point people in the way of Punjana and that's what we're going to do. Cheers to Punjana tea. Also, and by the way, they also do decaf and Irish breakfast. You know? So if you're a guy that can't have caffeine or, you know, you just love, you love being Irish, you love Ireland, and also you enjoy breakfast, that's what you've got to go for. We're also sponsored by Manscaped, manscaped.com. Here's what manscaped.com is. It has all the products for the gentlemen of the 21st century. All the all the products that our dads and granddads wouldn't have used, you know, they'd be against this kind of thing, we're into. You know what I mean? It's like mumble rap music nowadays. Your dad would be like, no, I don't want that anywhere near me. What we're doing is, we're listening to it, and also we're trimming our balls, and we're, we're taking care of our pubic hair. Taking care of our pubic hair. Dan, cut that by itself, send it to Manscaped, and tell them they can buy that slogan off us. I can't even remember what it was, but anyway, Manscaped sell ball deodorant, ball cleanser, ball wipes. You can really have a party down there and make it look good. Like, you know when you see people restore cars? That's what Manscaped essentially do. You're driving an old rusty bucket of shit that's failed the MOT. And ma- let Manscaped buff it out a bit. Let them tea cut it. Let them replace the trims. I don't know what trims are. Are trims a thing in a car? Rims. 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 How old am I? Trims. Hey, nice trims. Cool car, nice trims. Shut up, granddad. Anyway, the main thing they... I'm going to say the main thing they do. My favourite product is Lawnmower 3.0, which is behind me. It's a light razor now that looks like the barber is going to come along and do your sideburns with it no this is for this the sideburns in your g this is for your pubic hair all right you give it a quick whiz around there it's got a light on it you know in case you are someone who's into you know taking care of your pubic hair in the dark and we're all into different things uh yeah this is i 
I travel everywhere with this. The shops, banger. You know, I will always have a Manscaped 3.0 on me. Check it out. They do a travel pack, all that kind of thing. Great products. Manscaped.com. Use the code T with me for 20% off and free shipping. Dan didn't think I could get that back into its base, but I did. Fuck you, Dan. Ladies and gentlemen, Julian Simmons is kind of the honorary king of here. Isn't he? Like, everyone loves Julian. It sounds like everyone loves Raymond, but it's everyone loves Julian. Um, Julian Simmons has been on TV since I started watching TV. You remember him introducing soaps, doing continuity. He's made his own documentaries, like Come Fly with Julian. Um, I got to meet him a few years ago, and he's just honestly like... He's just someone that makes you happy being around him. You know, he he's always got a smile on his face. He's he genuinely is a legend. Like he's a, he is a legend. And I filmed something with him a couple of days ago. Asked him to do the podcast. Didn't know if he'd be up for it. And uh, he said, "Yeah, it was so much fun, so much fun." And Julian's sort of guy you could do twenty podcasts with in one day. You know, he just has great stories and just a just a gem of a guy. You know, and someone who. Someone who doesn't disappoint at all, you know, because you think the reality of meeting someone that might not be like you think they're going to be, he is, he is, he, he's just a party, a party of a guy, and uh, just, I can't, I can't speak highly enough of Julian Simmons, so this is the Tea With Me episode with our friend Julian Simmons, and now in the Tea With Me, Julian, honestly, this is potentially the episode of this podcast in about 115 episodes that I've been most excited about. Oh, you're very good. That's awful kind of you. People Imagine being this. excited about me coming. <laughs> <laughs> but like, honestly, like everything with you is just fun. So we'll talk about it in a bit, but we did a video years ago for Queens. We did a carpool karaoke oh, type yes, thing. Oh, yes, yes. Which yes. I want to talk about. I thoroughly about. enjoyed that. But like, it's an adventure. Like seeing you is an adventure. We filmed something recently just like 10 minutes ago, I got into your car to show you where our car park here was. And, and you know, there's, there's a bit of road rage there. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Because I'm, I'm so used to seeing you on TV for, you know, decades where it's, it's very, you know, professional. It's prim and proper. Uh, <laughs> you mouth like a uh, trucker. <laughs> well, you see, some of the people that come along, are, you know, shouldn't be driving cars, <laughs> I, I feel. Yeah. You know, I mean, at one stage when I first arrived into the high street, <laughs> there's a woman stopped in the middle of it. Yep. And I, because I, I'm thinking, where well, I've got to find your place. Is it down here? And I hadn't even rung you at this stage. And this one was, hey, she's, and she's going like this. <laughs> and I'm, what, 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 what does that mean, love? You know? And this is Hollywood, though. Yes, I know Hollywood. We have a, we have a um, what's that word? Um, an entitlement. You know, the, the roads here are just slightly different, you know? And they're uh, all big Range Rovers as well. It's not an easy town to drive yeah, around. So but, many 4 by 4s and sometimes yeah. th- horse boxes as well. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that got me thinking. All I, all I think for great TV, all we need to do is put a GoPro in your car and record you driving around because I, I really enjoyed that five minutes of, of, of being in your car. Well, normally it's not as frenzied at that as yeah. that normally, I think. Have you... Is this your first time doing a podcast? Have you ever done a podcast before? No, I've done, I've done a, about two other... A, somebody came to UTV once and I did a podcast in the canteen. And then there was another one I did in... Uh, Macara, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, you said I certainly like a, travel the world, like, you know. <laughs> you said that like a rich landowner. <laughs> In Maha, so you went to Mahara for a podcast? Ma- Mahara for a podcast, yes. Mahara is, uh, is, a, is a decent place. There's a couple of good eating spots in Mahara. Yes, and uh, personally speaking, I've opened a big shop in Mahara one Christmas. And of course, it was a big do. A big do. Was that a huge thing? Like a little bit more back in the day of like going to open things to do that because that I mean places don't really do because everywhere's like a chain place now or I you don't see, know if it, you go through a phase of opening shops yeah. opening supermarkets fashion shows yeah hosting shows and car launches which was a scream because <laughs> at first when I started car launches I wasn't driving a car <laughs> I was t- until UTV did the program of me learning to drive uh, it was then that I got the bug for it, and I thought, you know, I quite like this. I might get a car, <laughs> which I did. Excellent. Like, I, there, 
there is so much I want to ask you about and want to talk to you about, but do you do you get a sense of how much of like really like a national treasure you are? Like, do you on a day to day basis like do you f- still feel that you know when you when you're out and about? No, everybody f- must want to talk. I don't to you. feel I'm a national treasure. That's off. God, I, that's awful. <laughs> I I um I, I you know when I'm out shopping and everything. You know, people all come up and speak, and especially the ladies on the tills and all up, Julie Malabergi, <laughs> would you not get on the phone there to Big Arlene and tell her all we <laughs> girls at Sainsbury's want out for a vodka <laughs> and all this, you know, all <laughs> sitting on the till, fed up to the back But I, I, I think you could, I think you could make that happen. I think you don't, you don't use, I think you have more power than you know. I yeah. think if you walked up to Stormont and just started telling people what's what, I think they'd oh, listen. Oh gosh, no, no, no. I, I have met, uh, Mrs. Foster on innumerable occasions at Do's and a talk. She's great, great crack, you know. Yeah. Uh, she's done a lot of stuff at the airport, and of course, I was there an awful lot. And I mean, she, she's she she's affable. Yeah, most of them, pro- most politicians probably are, and yes. like with TV and stuff, you probably get you have got to see a different side of of so many people, and you've you've interviewed people and worked <laughs> with people, and uh, but you know. Being on TV for for so many years, does everyone think they know you? If that makes sense. Uh, I mean, I mean, you know, you can be out in in a you know apartment at the city hall. Yes. And you're out there with a crowd of friends, and you're sitting, and the place is buzzing. This is before lockdown, like yeah. the Tracy Hall and all her crowd. No, the place is buzzing, and I'm telling somebody a story, and I'm just coming up to the punchline when bump, this big bone girl. Sits and plumps herself on my knee. Julian, I pay my TV license like everybody else, so I'm sitting on your knee here. And you want to say, number one, darling, but you can't. Number one, love, you've ruined the punchline of my story. Number two, your TV license money comes nowhere near UTV. So, you know, that means nothing to me. And also, you know, you're crippling my thighs because she was a hefty bird. And... And just, but I, I'm just sitting on your knee because I pay for TV license like everybody else. So, so, uh, so many people I know that used to go like out, like nights out and sort of stuff to places like rain. Maybe not rain. So many people I know got a photo with you at rain, and we're like, I was talking to Julian for an hour. This person, I was, I was buying Julian drinks. It's like you must have to really uh, uh, do the rounds. You of see, people. Uh, what I always got to at rain, girls again. Whole, you know, gaggle of them all out, and it's a big one again. I'm getting you a shot, Julian. I said, no, thank you, darling. I, that's very kind of you. But I'm getting you a shot. I said, I don't drink them. It'll be a waste of you. I'm getting you a shot. And they're all getting lined up on the bar with awful vile blue and orange at the bottom, you know. Yeah. And, you get, and they give it to you, you know. And I'm, oh, Thank you. It's very, very kind of you. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do with this? Where am I going to empty it? Yeah. You know, because, if, God, it would... Take the, th- the back out of your throat drinking that. <laughs> when did, when did that all? So I want to like I want to go back, right? So through when... the mists of time, <laughs> back, back, back. <laughs> I want to know about when you first started getting into TV. When you first st- started getting well known, what was the moment where you realised that like some people know who I am, or people were coming up to talk to you? Wh- wh- when was that? I, I started in, in Air Canada. Well, I st- first of all, started in Hamilton Travel. Uh, I, I got the, 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 the trial period at UTV for six weeks. So I was doing my... What, what age were you then? Oh, so I like... I mean, I, I, I'm still telling people I'm 42 and three quarters. So I, c- I can't work out what age it was then. I was, um, I was in... It must have been in my... Mid twenties. <laughs> I'm saying mid twenties. That'll do rightly. And uh, right, yes, then and I was I was doing the job in Hamilton Business Travel. Then I got the position at Air Canada, in Canada House in North Street. And it was when I got to when I got the job at Air Canada that UTV sort of started using me very frequently during the week to fill in the gaps when people were on holiday. And then the next thing was they decided that by this time I was working and I transferred to Terminal 3 at Heathrow and was working for Air Canada and passenger service. 
and UTV decided they were going to have me on permanently at the weekend. And I was going to do Fridays and Saturdays. Then they made it Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. And then they made it Thursday, Friday and Saturday and Sunday. And I was jockeying all my shifts at Heathrow <laughs> and working out how I was going to do the UTV shifts. But, I mean, that... Although I love both jobs, UTV, of course, had the priority because it was home. And I was backwards and forwards on that shuttle like nobody's business. I was going to say, did you have people coming to you in your day job that recognised you from the TV and couldn't oh, work out? Oh, all the time. Like, you know, you're certain, sorting out a big crisis of a, d a delay at Heathrow. And in the middle of it is a, p a party of people from Belfast. <laughs> the, the, the recognition thing can hit you up the face. And then, of course, lying on a beach in Florida, and you're all like a, a butterball turkey, and your thing over your nose so you don't, it doesn't burn, and you're lying there, excuse me, <laughs> hello, and you're, you're, you've been half dope, sorry, are, are you Julian? And I'm saying, yes. <laughs> and I'm lying like, you know, in my speedo, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> And all covered with, with uh, you know, tr uh, Tropicana. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's a good stuff. I imagine you go for, like, you know, not the, not the suntan lotion, but, like, what's it? Like, the oil? I could see you with the oil. No, do you know what I do? I go to the Merchant Hotel before I go on my trip, and I'm spray tanned. So I'm like yeah. the boy from Ipanema when I'm getting on the aircraft. <laughs> oh, Julian, look at the colour of you. Oh, I say I'm always out in boats. <laughs> I'm always out in boats. And then you see, I'm always in the stand line. <laughs> yeah, and all that, you know. Well, I'm talking about the yacht stand at Troy, you see. Let me very quickly interrupt the podcast, just tell you we're also sponsored on the podcast by ExpressVPN. When you go to the loo, you close the door behind you. You don't want people looking in at you. You know, especially if you're like me and you drop like your jeans and pants the whole way down to your ankles. That's something I started doing in primary school and I've kept going. You know, I like to just get a little bit of air to the legs. You don't want people looking in at you. you that's the same for online. You know what I mean? Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the loo and just leaving the door open with a sign that says enter. You know, ExpressVPN, what it does is it just, it doesn't really tell people where you are. And in this part of the world... We don't really like people knowing where we are anyway. That's what our society is. So what ExpressVPN does, it stops people knowing where you are. It creates a secure, encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so your online activity can't be seen by anyone. And here's the thing, a secure, encrypted tunnel sounds like fun. I want to go to a secure, encrypted tunnel. Um, ExpressVPN it's very easy. It, it's an app. You click one button, you're protected. It's the world's number one rated VPN by Wired, The Verge, and countless others. And for a second, I thought that said The Verve, and I was like, I don't know why I would go to Richard Ashcroft for that advice. Um, if you think online activity should be your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash tea with me. We'll put a link in the description as well. Use the code expressvpn.com slash tea, use the code tea with me on expressvpn.com and get an extra three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash tea with me. Back to the episode with Julian Simmons. At this young age, when you join UTV and you start to be on the TV more and more, are you a different kind of presenter to what I would know? You know what I mean? Like, were, were you going well, in more generic and then you developed your personality or did you just go in? The story the is... Know? When I started in continuity at UTV, you introduced the programs in Vision, you did a voice over the end credits, you also read the news twice a night, and on the weekend you did the sports results, mm -hmm. where I hadn't a baldy clue <laughs> what I was talking about. A Hockle Young Farmers 4-2, Ardbo 3-11, that's a draw. And... I didn't know. I didn't know what on earth was going on. And Paddy McGinnity's come from behind in the second half. Pure beef on the hoof and all this. And it was. I didn't know what I was talking about. So I mean, you know, you had to. You had to sort of be able to adapt to everything. Yeah. And then one Christmas, I was in all over about four days, and there was no news to read. So I thought, great, I can do this job my way now and I'll introduce the programmes with a bit of a laugh. So I started to do that. And shortly after the Christmas period, I was 
coming down the stairs with my dinner in UTV and I met one of the bosses and he said to me, I saw you over Christmas and loved, liked what you really did. He says, I would like you to continue to do that. And was, this just, was that just putting a bit of personality into it? Yes, you know. I mean, I think my first amusing intro was going into Ghostbusters, the movie. Well, everyone, if there's something nasty at the top of your stairs, nasty, smelly entity, what are you going to do? Or who are you going to call? Ghostbusters, you see. And obviously they find that amusing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, was, that was how it all started, you know. From I, I was in, in the end, uh, when I started, I used to try and emulate the people that I saw on Thames TV or on London Weekend, but that you don't want that for Northern Ireland. Well, that, that, that's the same with stand up in a way as well. Like when I started, you're, you're trying to be like your favorite comedians and the popular yes. comedians, and then you develop your own with any luck, you develop your own style. What I, what I, what I, I, I understood from the word go, and I tried never to do it was talk down to the viewers. Yeah. Uh, you, you've, you've got to assimilate with the viewer and, and be at whatever level they're at, yeah. you know, and that's, that's, that's what I attempted to do, and thank God, I think I achieved it. Oh, yeah. Did you just then, from, from then, did you just start putting more personality into it? Uh, and then when did the soap thing start? When did that classic well, style start? Well, you see, start? coming in on the train in the morning, I used to hear the people talking about the soaps. Mm-hmm. See that frock shit on? That was ridiculous. Look at a woman of her age and that. That's absolutely... I mean, somebody should have said, tell her, go on out of that. And you can see everything she had for her dinner. Like, you know. So, I mean, you're hearing this all around you. And so that I would I would steal that. And first of all, I, I, when I first try, started to ham up the soaps, I used to say, as a woman on the train said to me, but okay. then I dropped saying a woman on the train. I would just go, what, I, what, I, what people seem to like me to do, do was say, let me see, if I said, t- uh, eight o'clock tonight on UTV, our drama is a real thrilling a chiller that you're really going to enjoy, and that takes us right through to news at 10. But now on the UTV, and then go into the <laughs> yeah. intro. Yeah. yeah, I love that because it always started off, like, you yes. know what I mean? It's, it's, it was yes. on the straight and narrow, yes. and then we just turned left. Yes, that's and right. And we went down the country see, road. People liked that, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't thrown out anyway. No, I, I mean, that was, like, I didn't, I, I, I wasn't somebody who watched the soaps. Like, my granny would always have had the soaps on, so I would have always seen that continuity, and that, I mean, it was, it was great. Like, it was just something different, and I think we appreciated it here because we knew that on like ITV or, or anywhere else around the UK or Ireland mm. introducing soaps uh, was, they weren't getting this no, you know what I mean no, it's like no, this is no. our kind of thing I used to get letters coming in from down the west coast of Scotland yes the west coast Air, uh, Prestwick Port Patrick Stranraer Islay uh, absolutely they anytime I go over to Port Patrick some, sometimes in the summer I go over with friends on the Stena and we go to Port, to Port Patrick and have a few drinks outside the Crown Bar, maybe a meal, and then we come back on the evening Stena. Booze cruise? Uh, abs- yeah, uh, more or less, yes. And there's, there's, you know, a lot of people are coming up to me in Port Patrick and saying, how are you and all this? It's nice to see you over again and all this business. Because they, they would have picked up yes, UTV? Yes, they were oh, yes. They, they, they get UTV rather than STV because of the mountain range or something. Right, right. Can I tell you a true story? There was a local fo- footballer. A local footballer went over to Scotland. They got signed for Rangers. That's 100% true. Um, he got signed from here to go to Rangers, and he went over on the boat, had his, all his gear with him, but brought a TV, brought his TV from home, the TV from his living room in his house, because, and I swear to God, he wanted to get you TV. He thought that if he brought his own TV Gosh. anywhere in the world, he would get UTV because it was programmed into that TV. That's hundred percent true. And apparently, that football was Lee Feeney. So there you go. Good lord, take his own TV with him. But people like people that that is just such a an iconic thing. Like your continuity before the soaps, like it just it just was such a beloved thing. And do you think now TV's getting a little bit more? I don't know if stuffy is the word, but is, is it losing that personality? So, so many people come up to me now and say that they really 
miss the yeah. UTV way of doing everything. Yeah. You see, we moved out of Havelock House to this absolutely beautiful building beside like Clarence and Dock. Glass front type thing. An eighth floor, beautiful views over Belfast and everything. But, I mean, there was no facility. There was no continuity suite. There was a booth that you went into to do voiceovers. And they used to say to me in London, Julia, just go in and just do it the way you would have done it in vision. But, you know, j just put a little bit of emphasis on things. Yeah. And I thought, no, that's not going to work. Look, <laughs> they want to see the bake. But, I mean, I, mean, they, I have to say, uh, ITV treated both Gillian Porter and myself like royalty. We were treated terrifically and they looked after us and I had a full nine months furlough on full pay up before we were made, made redundant. I mean, I could see the writing on the wall from about the third month in. I thought, I know what's going to happen here. They're, 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 they're not, they're not, you see, at that stage they were using the London voices then. They weren't using any continuity from, from UTV at all. So I thought they're going to adapt to this and they're going to want to stick with this. It's cheaper, darling. It's cheaper. Was that, um, was that tough to take, to, to, to move on? to Because you, we're losing all that kind of thing. Like Even the news, even when you watch local news, uh, and any news, there used to always be that. And finally, there used to be a little bit of light, the contrast. There's none of that That's now. gone. The personality from like a lot of local TV, I think, is gone. So, oh, definitely. You say the writing was on the wall, but still, was that was it? Must have been tough to because that's such a big part of to your life. To tell you the truth, it wasn't because I sort of just adapted to it. I really did, and I mean, the lockdown went on and on, and the furlough was extended and extended month after month, and you just thought, no. You know, you just I, couldn't see yourself back doing it. Definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, Do you still like? Will you still walk about the house and introduce introduce the soaps in the same way, just in your own company? I like to think you do. Uh, to tell you, you, could, that, you can make so much money walking about houses at no, about seven no, o'clock no, no, every no, weeknight. No, no I, I see, well, to tell you the truth, the awful truth is that I never look at the soaps now. I never look at this morning. I never look at loose women. I don't look at all the things that I had to look at yeah, yeah. to be fully abreast of them. Um, so I, I, I really, I really don't. And the odd time when I'm shaving in the morning and I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'll come out with something <laughs> out of the blue. Like you, what? Oh, God only knows, you know. Um, <laughs> stuff. Stuff I couldn't say in here. No, you can. You <laughs> no, can. <I> you can. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's just it's just whatever comes into your head. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if we, I say, I want to go back a little bit. When you know, when when you were introducing the soaps and you know doing so much, and and local TV was was huge. You know what? When, when it, it was, was because there weren't all, there weren't all the other channels available yeah, yeah, then yeah. to people. And still, there's so many people in Northern Ireland that get up in the morning, turn on UTV and go about their daily business, never turn it off. Yeah, yeah. So it's constantly going. And then as it comes up to bedtime, they sit maybe and have their supper and a cup of tea, watch the programme and then switch it off and go to bed. So there's, of course, there's more channels now for people to look at, but there's a hardcore that only looked at UTV, the UTV from Havelock House. Do they have like a, a name for them, like the UT, UTV Hardcore? They sound like they could get aggressive. No, no. Uh, this, uh, the only aggression you got maybe was disgusted of Belly Home right. phoning in. Yeah. Because that boy is coming out far too, that innuendo and all, far too much for to listen to. I had friends over from England and they were sitting with their mouths open and all this, you know. You could have made innuendo right yeah, at that I, moment. Oh, oh, I could have done, yes. <laughs> But of course you can't. And you've always got to be hail fellow well met. That's the thing. It's like being, it was like being like a politician. I mean, sometimes people come up and they bore you, God forgive me, with some long, complicated story. Tracy Hall was great. Julian, come on. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. It's a subtle way to get you out yeah. of something. And I said, I'm awfully sorry. I've got to go with her and I'm so sorry. But, you know... Uh, 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 was it all... Was it all 
positive when when you you'd speak to people on nights out or people would stop you in the street. It's like, all it was yes in in nightclubs and everything and people stopping on the street. It was all very nice and seeing people at Heathrow and on flights. You know, and they 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 want to talk about the soaps and they want to talk about something that's on TV or or give their opinion about other people on UTV. Well, you've got to be very diplomatic. And speaking of being diplomatic, and you know, I I always think if you know if social media was around in the nineties and that sort of thing, it'd be a lot harder to to maintain that because. You, you know, you could be out drinks with friends and you can talk about whatever you want. You see, I to, never do social media. If yeah. people want me, they can phone me, they can text me, they could wrong UTV, or if they have my number at home, they could they could ring me. I, I don't want social media because I've seen so many people anguished by social yeah, media. Yeah, that's true. Probably if there was social media, I'd be slagged off something you, shocking. You would be, if there was social media and you were on it, you would be the king of social media. Yeah. Oh. No, you no, no. honestly, you popping up on TikTok, you know, Instagram store, like people, because th- when I realized that really was so about, I think it was five, six years ago, Queen's University medical students asked me oh, yes, to host, that, yes, host yes. their fashion show. And, uh, and we made a video doing like a carpool karaoke type thing. And that's the first time I'd met you. And it was everything I hoped it would be. Was more. Jackie Barkley with me? Uh, when we did that show with you, I yes, can't remember. Yes. Jackie used to be my lecturer at Belfast Med, yes. and she worked with you. Yes, at UTV. that's right, because she knew you so yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we showed up to do this carpool karaoke, and, and, it, and it was great. And they edited a video out of it, and they put it. They out. showed it as people were coming into that's the right. show. That's I remember right. that. So they put it. I, I, and I put a clip of the video, and it was like seven minutes long. And then over lockdown. I was looking back at all the old videos I'd done and trying to, you know, cut them down and do a lot because that's what it is nowadays. It's quicker stuff. And I made like a couple of minutes version of what we did. I trimmed it way down, put the best bits in and it flew. It just like, it blew up and and people were like, you know, it was only praise. It was praise for you. Like, that's what it was. People were like, look people at Julian. People were very kind. You had a pair of sunglasses on. We were singing rap songs. It was It was a great time. And... That must be a great feeling to know that, like the young generation now. Well, I, I'm very, I, I, I have to say I am very lucky because senior citizens, uh, middle-aged people, teenagers, and kids that size, uh, you know, will come up and say hello, and you know, want with their mobile phones and want a selfie. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> which is nice. Yeah, and. You know, leaving UTV and, you know, now just, you know, doing a lot of different things. And is there, is there any, like, is there any passion that you have that you would love to do? Like, maybe something you never got a chance to that now... Well, I, I, I did do a travel show at one stage. Come Fly with Julian. Uh, yes. I watched it. And, I would, and I would like to do another one of those. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the travel is a big part of my life. I love traveling and I was involved in the travel industry. So I would know, I knew what I was talking about. Yeah. See, at the moment, it's all jiggery pokery with yeah. uh, nobody go, able to go anywhere. Or is it, uh, is it an amber list or a red list or a green list? Yeah. You know, that's a, it's a real muck up. But I love that. And years ago, now going right back, right, right back now, of course, this would never happen. Don't laugh at me now. Okay. I wanted to host the Eurovision Song Contest. Why is that not a thing? Because you a thousand percent should be hosting the Eurovision Song Contest. Well, you see, I'm I... not joking. Like that, that works for me. That works for me. You hosting the Eurovision Song Contest. Well, years ago, you'd it be was... slagging off all the other countries. Yes, yes, to a certain extent, and also doing it with a certain amount of polish. Yeah. Oh, I would, oh, have, I would have liked, you know. A, I, I, I can speak a bit of French. I could Heathrow. I had to speak French all the time. You know, the the the, the Canadian part of yeah. uh, or the French part of Canada. Can all ask, my announcements were in English and in French. Can I ask what's unknown in the UTV in French? Uh, et maintenant sur le UTV. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I I had to do all these announcements and make it sound warm and friendly at Heathrow. Yeah. Um, Did you ever like forget that you weren't on UTV and you were professionally working and just like slag off baggage handlers? No, one day I was. Had nose, like, I was it was a day when it was all days you're rushing around the airport, 
and I was boarding the Toronto flight, and I would say, uh, Air Canada Flight 857, Boeing 747 Jetliner, non-stop to Toronto, will very shortly be available for boarding. At this time, we'd like to ask viewers seated in rows... <laughs> I've, I've, I did that, you know, yeah, yeah. and once once on UTV, I talked about we'd like to we'd like to remind passengers <coughs> served by the Brocker transmitter, you know. <laughs> did you did you ever fuck up badly on air? Oh God, so many times. And then I learned. I used to used to <gasps> like this. Because you were live as yes, well, right? Up, all live. And then I learned how to bladder on and gloss over and the thing to do is when you say something you don't really know how to say the word say it with complete conviction <laughs> and look straight down that camera so that nobody oh that must be the way to say that you know that's the way you do it yeah i love it so you just like you commit to it is what you're saying yes and don't falter what do you know what i imagine like if you're live continuity like did you ever introduce a program and then it wouldn't play and you were just i've introduced the wrong program so oh, many times I've, I've gone to the one before the, the one i'm about to introduce yeah oh dreadful dreadful stuff i made some right hornets yeah and the time we used to do a thing in the morning called looking at the day ahead and always all, all milk and honey, you see, and all relaxed and looking sideways at the camera. Well, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to today's lineup here on UTV. At 9.25, we've programmes for schools, and at 11 o'clock, it's Tales of the Riverbank with Hammy the Hamster. All this <laughs> shite, you see. And, and it, it, you're making it all milk and honey, but I, I was sitting there this morning, and as, as I talked, um, I, just before we went on air... It was going, do, 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 and I take a slug of water. I come up into vision, and the water hasn't gone down. <laughs> and it's just sitting there, and I'm talking, and my voice is starting to waver, and I think, am I going to be sick? Why didn't you swallow the water? I, I had swallowed it, but it, it was like in an airlock. If, if I could have burped, it would have, if I hadn't have been on TV, it would have cleared. And, it, and I'm, I'm talking away, and I thought, this is all going to come down my nose. And talking away, and thank God I went to a, we showed a trailer or something, and I sort of did a loud re reverberant burp, and that shifted it. And the other time, one morning I was on reading the news, and as I was sitting reading the news, the wheel came off my chair. It was like I was on Titanic. I was over and trying to rectify myself, and I'm pulling with my calves to get in, to get to the mic, and it's, Tilting the whole. Some of the things that happened in yeah. UTV are ridiculous. Did you get to meet some like great celebrities back in the day? When there was a Kelly show, you know they were all Kelly show, and we've had Jerry on the podcast before. I love Jerry Kelly, and used to love. So that Friday night show was, oh, it was a big, huge an, hour, of, an hour and a half. We used to watch in my so I used to go to my granny's house on Friday night. Uh, shout out White City in Hollywood, and we used to watch. Uh, give my headpiece on the Kelly show on Friday nights. Me and my granny and grand, this is what we did. And the Kelly show at a time had like amazing guests that they were flying in. They were, and yes. bands too. Like you would, but yes. there was like sure, three I was or coming back from guests. Air Canada one day and I was, I was coming home on the half two out of Heathrow. And um, there was a, as I was sitting in the lounge, a group of like youth employment guys went past and then i recognized one of the guys with them it was a guy called john from the kelly office i says john what about you he says i've just come over to take bring these boys over to Belfast, and it was a new band called take that oh yeah and so i saw them and they were quite you know affable and shy on the flight and then we got into belfast i had to run like frig and get changed and get myself sorted ready for work that and then and uh, take that we're on the show that night so all after the kelly show i always went up into the green room yeah and then i had to come down from there to introduce prisoner cell block h <laughs> what a show uh, uh, what you, a show oh god almighty <laughs> at at um at, at <laughs> 10 past one i think it was and i was up in the green room and um uh, i said i've got to go down here and would you, would you have taken a couple of drinks? No, no, no. I, ne I never drink when I'm working, ever, 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 ever. ever. I, I, see, wine or anything makes me just go. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, people say, I'd love to see you full. I just was sitting there. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm no good with alcohol. I, I right. really avoid it. So you would go up, party with everyone, then nip down. Yeah, I introduce... would have two royal jellies before I go out <laughs> for the night. And that would keep me ticking over. I'm on the floor still at three o'clock, you know, and there's an old children. I have to go home. I have to go home. And I, I, I'm generally okay, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I said, I said in the green room, I, look, I have to go down here and introduce prisoners. Uh, and this guy, um, oh, God, his name's gone right out of my head. Um, Give us a clue. Oh, I shouldn't know. Jesus. Gary Barlow? G- no, keep going. He oh, left. Jason Orange? No, he left. Robbie he, Williams? Robbie Williams. And, By the way, I could have done the other two. Yeah, Marco and Hard Donald. I just am a super fan. And Robbie said to me, "Oh, could could will you take me down and show me how to get? Because you know UTV's corridors are a rabbit warren." I said, "Well, we'll go quick." So I'm taking him down the stairs, and he says to me, "You, sm- that's a lovely smell. What have you got on?" I said, "It's obsession," because I used obsession all the time. He says, "Obsession. Where do you see?" And in the middle of the lobby, he unzipped his pants. And I thought, Christ, what's going to happen here? And he pulled out his underpants with Calvin Klein on the top of them. He says, see, that's Calvin Klein. I says, yes, put it away now. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the woman on the reception desk, she was sitting, what on earth's going on here? Anyway, it's so that's my claim to fame. Yeah. Robbie Williams has shown me his underpants. Of his own accord, and you, and like, there's a you know a lot of people in the world, men and women who like love Robbie Williams, oh, and, God, and would yes. be so excited if he did that. Yes. I love that your attitude in the rece- in the foyer because you're so professional. Was like you need to put that away and get it and leave. And then you see, it was it let me entertain you. Yeah. He did that in his underpants. Do Black- you think that was like a no, he was no, no, to no, you no, in a no, way? no, 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 it wasn't. It was nothing to do with me, but but <laughs> <coughs> it looked good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for those yeah. who may appreciate it. Yeah, not in my in my opinion, not the best looking member to take that. Jason Orange all day long. He's mm-hmm. in the background, doesn't do a lot of this, a lot of singing, and he's become a bit reclusive. But I, point for point, best. And have you ever spoken to Gary Barlow? No. Why is it tough? <laughs> you know, there was some kids in one day, and he was he, this time he he was away from take that right, and they were all mesmerised that he was in makeup. So I took them down. I said, Gary, I'm sorry to bother you, but there's some kids here and they're dying to meet you. Could you spare 30 seconds? Well, that's what it was like, pulling teeth. Uh, I was so, so surprised. And then he did the the judging on uh, The X Factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had a bit more personality then, but I just thought, no, you've got to speak to those kids yeah. and make them feel... Welcome and at least Robbie Williams didn't show them his pants though. Well, that's true. No, showed them to me, darling. Showed them <laughs> who's, to me. Who's the rudest person you've met in like a celebrity environment? Like even like when people were coming over for the Kelly show. Like, was there anyone you met that you just thought that's that's not the way to be? Do you remember the man who used to have Snorbits the dog? Absolutely not. Oh God, see names at the moment. Is he from a soap? Uh, no, no, he was a comedian. Bernie Winters. He'd buck teeth. <laughs> oh, is this is right. See, my forty-two and three quarters is short. My age gap now. <coughs> he, um, I've never gigged with Bernie Winters. He, he was he was travelling on Air Canada. Right. Well, we handled Thai International, and he turned up less than forty minutes before the flight, and the seats that had been allocated by him for him had been released and given to somebody else. He was vile. Yeah. Vile, and I had to pull out all the stops to keep my professionalism as much as I could. I mean, I w- in a way wish you hadn't, because for anyone, that would be a great anecdote. If you lost it and punched someone, that would always be a great anecdote mm-hmm. to tell people mm-hmm. that you got you got sparked mm-hmm. out by Julian Simmons. Like, <laughs> always be enjoyable. No, I would never hit them. I would never hit them. But I would, I would, I've glowered at people. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it to me. No, Don't do no, it no. Me. I've, I've done that when the people have been really obnoxious. Yeah. You yeah. know. But you see, in ninety nine percent of my time, I'm walking around and I've got to put a coat hanger in my mouth to make sure yeah. you know, so I'm not glaring at people when I'm saying something. and something. Aren't you Eugene Somerton? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> well, see, that's it. I said no. I'm Julian. Oh yes, Julian. <laughs> you know, aren't you Eugene Somerton? 
But where that comes from, where they get that, you know? I do this thing on flights. I want you as like a, you know, so much experience in the aviation industry. So if I'm traveling for a gig and it's like long haul, if I'm going over to America, I will do this thing where, you know, like on those flights, especially nowadays, transatlantic flights aren't always that busy. You know, you fly from Dublin, you know, there's usually like quite a, sp- a lot of space. That's good. I, 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 I like to have three seats. Of course. I like to spread out, lift the armrests up. Lie down, on, yes. Go to sleep. Mm-hmm. But there seems to be a little bit of etiquette around that where I always see people make the mistakes where they make their move before the all doors the close. Complete. So I've learned to wait until that happens because if the air, air hostesses see you go too soon, mm-hmm. they don't like that. You see, on a lot of aircraft, above every seat, yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a little light, blue light. And those are all on when you board with, with the, the number of your row. Oh. But as the when the doors close, the lights go off, and you know everybody's on. Ah. So then you can move, bodge about. And so yeah, and I'm always pretty good at that. Like I'll dart like straight. Whoosh. I'll be ready. I'll mm. have the seatbelt on, like I'm ready to go, but it's not clipped in. Then I just make my move. But say like sometimes, I I would I I try and get upgraded quite a lot, but I'm not good at doing it. I just go can I at the desk at check in. I say. Can I just get upgraded? And they go, absolutely not. See, they always, they, What's the key? What's the key to that? Uh, you've got to be dressed. Oh, well, that's possible, probably where I'm going wrong. Possibly have a tie on. Right. And uh, a nice pair of trousers and a jacket, a suit. Um, and also, you know, you don't always get upgraded. Oh, I always get upgraded in your flights. And you say, no, you don't. Right. Not in this one. So would you, is it better to go into that with like supreme confidence and, and be charming? Or is it better the to be a to bit nervous? The thing to do is to, is to come towards the end of check-in for that particular flight and say, um, and the thing to say is, are you upgrading anybody today? Uh, especially if you've got the gear on. Yeah. And you see, at that stage, they're, they're starting to run out of seats. And if if they if they need to upgrade, they will do it for you. Yeah. I mean, what, what some of our oversold seven four sevens, we used to do patrols at the check in, up and down the queues, and look for well dressed people or maybe two ladies travelling alone, and say, ladies, would you come with me? Uh, you're very well dressed. You're looking absolutely fabulous. Two film stars. I'm going to put you into <laughs> what a treat uh, into executive or or uh, you know first class or executive class. So, so I'm definitely going to blame you if when travel opens up again and I have to fly to New York and sit in the economy seat that I booked in a suit. Well, like you that's see, going to be a disaster. You see, you see, you can put you can put on a jacket and a tie, and then shorts bottom half. Mm, no shorts. Right. No shorts, because uh, that's, and especially cut-off shorts, you know, jeans yeah. that have cut off. Oh, Jesus. No, Don't no, do that. no. Uh, uh, and then, you know, you'd have somebody coming up at the gate, some slob, you know. Pardon me, and there's a whole queue of passengers. I always got upgraded in your flight, and that dingbat downstairs said he wasn't going to upgrade me. And all the other passengers are looking as they're coming, just coming through and have a seat. <laughs> yes, sir, hold on. What's the problem? I d- would need to be a- and I say, can I just see your ticket, please, sir? Yeah. And we had a supervisor called Erica, and she used to get the glasses on. Well, now, sir, I can see that unfortunately, this is the very cheapest type of ticket—a ticket that Erica. indeed we don't really ever upgrade on. And in any case, I haven't got any seats in the executive cabin to give you, so we won't be upgrading you today. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But you, you you do meet, you know, quite a few slobs <laughs> trying it on. You know? I'm one of them usually. No, 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 you wouldn't be. No, I'm, you know the re- real American slob, like the policeman that kneeled on your man's neck? Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of Amer- trash North people. American yeah. trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and they, they want, I always got upgraded. My company spends $30,000 a month with your company. Yeah. You, you actually sound a little bit like Van Morrison there, if I'm honest. Oh, no. <laughs> Would you upgrade Van? Uh, uh, he'd, probably be, he'd probably be upgraded anyway. Yeah, you know, yeah, he'd, yeah. He'd have bought a, a, a club class ticket. <laughs> yeah. Have you met Van? I have, yes. How did you, how did you find he was, that? He, he was fine. He was on the Kelly show. And the next time I saw him... 
I was working for Art Canada and there was a UTV anniversary celebration in the Europa. So I did my shift at Air Canada, flew home to be for the UTV reception and night and stayed overnight in the Europa and got up to go at the first one back to Heathrow. So when I went to bed at two o'clock in the morning, Van was sitting with all the drinks all lined up and talking away. And I came down the stairs at half four on my way back to the air and he was still sitting there talking. He was going a humdinger. He'd sung beautifully yeah, on yeah. the stage, and he was still cracking away. Oh, me and um, he don't. Me and Michael went to see him a couple of years ago, and you hear all these stories of like how grumpy he is and that sort of thing. We saw him in the Culloden, and it was very stuffy. It was like a, it felt like a business dinner, even though it wasn't. People in suits, and um, and he started off, and you could tell he wasn't feeling it, and then he stopped, and we thought he was going to walk off. Then he said. Everybody goes, we need to get more of an atmosphere. He's like, bring your chairs to the front of the stage. Come on, everyone, bring. So everyone moved away up, and we sat, like, from me to him away, and it was just the best. It was, like, such a good, such a good concert. But Northern Ireland's probably, like, that small of a place that, like, you you make assumptions about people pretty quickly, and, you know, you hear this about this person, and I imagine it's, like, you know, everyone knows everyone's business sort of thing. Um, You see, you're too young. To remember, but I remember Van Morrison when he was the lead singer with them. Yeah, Baby, yeah. please don't go down Here to comes New the Orleans. Night. Yes, yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. And he was. He, I mean, he 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 stood out then. He was really good. Uh, so I, he's been in the business a long, long oh, yeah. time. Yeah. Um. Did you like when you were growing up? Like, w- were you always going to do something like like TV, like acting, performing? Or, or was there anything else like you could potentially have done? Because I can't picture you doing anything else. When I went to school, I wanted to be a pilot, a captain on the aircraft. Well, you see, you need good mathematics for that, and I'm a big thicko. <laughs> I can write you a lovely essay, and I was good at divinity. And believe it or not, I was actually quite good at geography. But maths, yeah. a big, I'm thick... Listening. Dunderhead. I took, um, I failed my math GCSE three times and the first time I failed it in school. You know, you're, there's a GCSE you're allowed to bring a scientific calculator in for. I brought a novelty Smarties promotional uh, calculator in that was just a giant orange Smarty with like what, just one to nine on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I never got my math GCSE ever. Like, oh, I, my, I have, whatever dyslexia is for numbers, I, I have that. So when, when I... When I saw, I had to came to terms with the fact I was never going to be a captain on an aircraft. I then thought I might go into acting, yeah. And that's why I was in the Hollywood Players and St Mark's Dramatic Society and Rosemary Players. I did a few of those, but uh, you know, I, I I never thought I was going to finish up in television doing continuity. So I mean, imagine a lot Pardon of people me, feel like a need to perform or, or express themselves and, and when people get into acting you think maybe that's why they're doing it so it wasn't that for you like did did you sort of fall into tv then by accident and it was an accident because somebody saw me in the hollywood players here at the queen's hall uh, in a comedy and uh, he said you should be on television and he says i know somebody well she's Everybody Everyone says, says that. that it's usually I, someone in a paramilitary. Yes, it could be it yes. could be one of two things. It's either a good opportunity or you know the crime is about to happen. Well, it turns out that he he wrote. I had to write in a letter to this Mister Brum Henderson, whose wife was the sister. I've got to say this very carefully. <laughs> sister of a girl I used to play around with when I was about thirteen, fourteen, as we did puppet shows together. You know, Julie, if that's yeah. code, if yeah. that's code, no, I don't no, 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 that we did puppet shows together. And uh, her sister was Brom Henderson's wife and secretary. And was so Brom my first name? Oh, sorry? Was Brom, Brom his first yes, name? yes, yes. So when my letter arrived with my photograph, she picked up, says, that's Julian, and showed it to him. So I was called in. Yeah. And so it began. I mean, that's crazy that, like, 
you would write a letter then you know what i mean like that just say like now you, you dear know, sirs i'm writing to uh, <laughs> see if there's a possible future vacancy on your tv staff i said yeah you know blah 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 what 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 sort of kid what sort of kid were you like were you um like you know outrovert is that the word were you like a performer were you yes as a kid yes Always? i used to do puppet shows at house and have all the kids in the area in. Would you consider bringing the puppet shows back? No, no. I had a big, I had a quite a big theater with lights and everything, and I had uh, as a kid. Yes. Oh, oh yes. so I was definitely right when I asked, like, were you an extrovert? You're like, yes. Yeah. Oh, you absolutely. Built the theater. Yes. Yes. And uh, if if it was say Aladdin, I got geared up as a Chinaman. <laughs> and came in at the start of the show to introduce the show. Julian. Bring this back. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and t- to welcome everybody in the beautiful, beautiful Chinese outfit. And uh, I had friends help me stage the thing, you know, yeah. help me do the puppeteering. Where did you grow up? A mixture of England and here. My oh, mum and okay. dad are from Bexley, Beckenham, Sidcup. And so a lot of my time was spelt in England, but I was educated, educated as best they could at Methody. Okay, so were you doing the shows, like the theatre shows in England, or were you doing them here? No, here, here. Okay. And, and, and all the kids came, and other ones came and did the sweets and everything. It was a whole big thing, packing about 30 or 40 kids into our front room. It's more than I get at some gigs on this outdoor oh, tour. No, but I mean, it, it was all good and all good experience, like you know. But I, you know, being on the stage, like being on stage, is great. I'm sure you love doing amateur dramatics. When I know what I'm doing, yes. But would you think of doing some like one man show type thing I have now? Because you've, you've had a life. You know? I have done lots of after dinner speeches where I put a I put a couple of skits into. Yeah, yeah, and all that. But I don't think I would have the courage to get up and, you know, did you hear the one about the wee man? That sort of thing. In yeah, case it, it fell flat. Even like a way of, do, you know, a show about like your memoirs, about your experiences. Because like you travel all around the world. You're so well known to people as well. Like I, th- I People think- have said to me to, to consider doing like, you know, uh, some... Big stars have done it where, you know, they come onto the stage and they fill that stage for two hours with an interval in the middle. Yeah. And I, oh, yeah, I suppose years ago I would have considered it. I don't know whether I'd have the courage to do it now. I think we would love that. Uh, I mean, certainly, uh, I've, you know, I've done gigs where there's maybe 50 people in a room yeah. and you entertain them. What do you do? What do you do? Do you t- tell stories and that kind of thing? Yes, or it... or, or uh, yeah, t- things that have happened to me and and all that, which people appreciate. Thank God. Yeah, I think people just love hearing from you in general. Like, there's some, there's a familiarity where you're like, I mentioned already about people thinking they know you. It's that thing of like well, you've always been around. It's, it's very nice to think that people really feel they know me, which is good because I feel I've achieved something. Then yeah, of course. Because at one stage. Before I actually joined Air Canada, I was painfully shy, believe it or not. not. And then in, in, in the travel agency and everything, I, I started to perform, especially when there was bombs, you know, oh. because the typists on the top floor were terrified and crying. Oh. And I used to have to try. It was my job to set the alarm off to bring them down from the fifth floor. OK, did you just do that with your voice? No, no, no. He, he, I, had a, I had a key round my neck to open the back door to let people out. And there was a wee thing to hit the glass to set the alarm off. Right. And the typists on the top floor were more terrified than the alarm than any hundred pound bomb. Right, right, they right. They would come and run down. Oh, Jesus, Mary Joseph, we're killed. Oh, Jesus, we're killed. You know, all that. And there used to be people in the <laughs> building up. This was a rickety old building in Donegal Street, which is now the Premier Inn. Okay. And there was a jeweller and there was a solicitor. And so all these people had to come out of the building. And one woman was coming, I remember, running down the stairs one day. Because I opened the door. The army had said, there's, there's reports of a suspicious uh, package round here. Robbie Williams? No. And I looked, and here was a pram outside the door with no, nobody in it. I goes, oh, Jesus. Pushed it away up the street, you see. <laughs> 
Well, then this woman came running down the stairs quickly with a baby swinging by the leg. She was rushing that far. Oh, was her she was holding the baby, but I didn't know that, you see. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think there is a thing of everyone feeling they know you, which is, I'm sure, has its good and bad points. And, and I, you know, I think of you as being someone who, who, who's, you know, quick-witted, funny, presenting with a smile on your face. Quick-witted? Do you, do I don't you, know about that. Oh, no, definitely. You were calling people some things in the car when we were, I was driving with you for five minutes that I, I've never heard words like that before. So I think that was pretty quick. But do you consider yourself like, are you a happy person? Oh, yes. Yes. Thank God, yes. Not, I'm not, n- not a miserable person, no. Yeah. No, I can't imagine you being... No. I can't imagine no. you being miserable. I always look, look on the funny side of things. Yeah. Yeah. And there's always some humour in everything, especially in Belfast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And people in transit and everything, you know, it's crazy. It's so crazy. I think it's great as well that, like, everything's been positive for you in terms of, like, you know, people coming up and talking to you and, you know, wanting to chat because, you know... People aren't very nice. Like, there's no two ways about it. I'm very lucky. Yeah. You know. But, like, you know, being on TV and that sort of thing, like, you know, it can always be divisive, especially when TV was... When I started in (coughs) in television... Can I say this? I suppose I can. You say anything, yeah. Yeah, uh, there were people who worked in television as on-air presenters who treated the public dreadfully. Right. That's all. I bet, that's, just, that's what I'll say. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I didn't like the way they talked to people, and you know, people wanting autographs. Oh, off camera, you mean? Oh, so okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I just think, no, 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 you can't be like that. You've always got to make time for people if they want to speak to you. Yeah. It's part of the job. I think you've, I found anyway that the, when people are really on top of their game and really good at what they do and the people that have been doing it the longest, you find that they are like the nicest people, you know. So I've, I've interviewed like people like Rory McIlroy before and Jimmy Dorn and people like that. You find that the people that are like huge are the most down-to-earth people, mm-hmm. whereas it's people who, who think they're someone that have the bad attitude. Oh God, I can't, I can't abide that. I can't abide people like that. Yeah, it's... Because I see it, you know, I've seen it through the years of my time in UTV. Somebody arriving in UTV, appearing, and then thinking that they're God's gift to the world. Yeah. Look at me, no hands. Yeah. You know, and that they're, they're gone in about six weeks. Well, it's rare, I think, that it happens here because... Here is like a humble and place where you'll get put in your place pretty quick if, oh, if you are arrogant like that. But of course, some people and you, you never put on airs and graces to yeah. people in God's own country. Yeah, because that is fatal to do that. Yeah, I think people definitely here appreciate it when you are authentic, whatever that is. You know, for better or for worse, kind of thing. Yeah, like we talk about Van Morrison there, who ha- who is known to be like very grumpy and that sort of thing. If he's like that with everyone. I have no problem with that, no. you know. But if he's if he's you know if he's lovely to people that are maybe important or whatever, and then changes when he's around, if you want to say like Joe Blogs, like me or something. But I, I I just like people that are consistent. So if you treat everyone well, great. But it's funny too. You're talk, talking about you know meeting people who are important. Uh, you know when I'm out and about, and you're maybe hosting an event and you've got to, you're meeting various people who are involved with it and there are some people who think because you're in t on tv that they have to adjust their voice well hello julian how are you <laughs> all the vials are getting rounded you see yeah. and we're so pleased you've come along here today for the <laughs> entertainers you know and i just think it's so crazy that they feel they've got to do that well that's that's a com- when you say you do comedy people just want to tell you a joke or they feel that they, they think that you always just want to hear comedy and stuff oh, and you like, always get somebody i always want to hear it have a laugh but yeah. like you know. Well, Julian, did you hear the one about the two yeah. nuns doing press ups in the cucumber field? And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking, no, thank you, no, no, no. <laughs> Tell me it later. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before, but I enjoyed it. Um, Dan, we had some questions on um, on the Patreon. Some some people uh, sent in some questions, but yeah, I mean, I. I think like we we were filming something the other day and we talked about 
you know, me, you and Dave, you know, my friend Dave, um, Dave Elliott, we, we were talking about, you know, we should we should do something together. Like oh, I'm do, on for that, yes. I, 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 and I don't even know what it is. Maybe it's a travel thing, maybe it's something else, but like, peop- I think people just want to see like what you get up to. That's just, that's TV, that's it. that's enjoyment for me. Walking around, you know, get the road rage in, all that sort of thing. I think, I think we, you know, we travel, we travel around. Because you, you, you've been to places that like, I've never been to, Dave's never been to. Well, you to. will be. We're uncultured. No, you're not. Well, we are, we are. You're no, not. you'd be surprised. No, I mean, I, I, I've travelled so much because I've worked in the airline industry and I've had become close friends with cabin crew from British Airways. So I travel around the world with them when they're working. A right. six-day Bangkok, Sydney, a nine-day Bangkok, Sydney, a five-day Hong Kong, a I four-day mean, Phoenix, Arizona. A, a seven-day Bangkok, Sydney sounds like it maybe doesn't involve travelling. Oh, it's all travel. It's, yeah. it's, 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 uh, it's London, London, Bangkok, two days in Bangkok. Oh, I see what you mean. No, <laughs> no. Well, it can be if, if you want to go to those clubs, but you see, some, <laughs> with those flights sometimes, you know, you've got to get up and be in the mo- fresh as a daisy in the morning, so you yeah. can't be wrecked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrecked. I've done that once. But we'll not go down that road. <laughs> oh, let's go down that road. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's and then you, you get into Sydney, and you've a day and a half in Sydney, and then you're back to Bangkok for another two days. Sorry, I know that's immature, but you can't say you've half a day in Sydney and then you go to Bangkok. Oh. Well, we used we used, to, we used to have great fun at Heathrow when we we Air Canada a handle Thai. You know, and I say, I'm just going to do the boring announcement. And you leave the front desk and go down the other end of the microphone. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thai International Fight TG901, non-stop 747 to Bangkok, will very shortly be available for boarding. At this time, we'd like to invite, invite passengers travelling to Bangkok, <laughs> seated in rows. You see, and the whole front desk are perpetuating themselves. <laughs> And, and the one I, doing the mic, you've got to do that and then turn and look at the passengers and go, <laughs> you know? Or the benevolent. <laughs> up the aisle of the aircraft, you know? <laughs> it all sounds like code. Um, Dan, we've we got a couple of questions there. Uh, Jane wants to know where the idea is for the intros for Coronation Street came from. Yeah, I, and I want to know that too. Thanks for the question, Jane. So, were you making those up on the spot, the intros for the soaps, or? Well, you know, I'd, 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 going through the night, there'd be intro to Emmerdale, and then the, I'd see the, the next ones into Corrie. What's happening in Corrie? Yeah. So I would then put that into my, and then sometimes I was sitting at twenty five past seven, thinking, "What's God, that frig all funny here? Yeah, yeah, somebody's yeah. dead. What am I gonna do? Yeah." Yeah, and you'd pull something out of the air, you know. Nose like a cook- <coughs> nose like a cooker hood, maybe is the best ever. Oh yes, that's Peter Barlow. <clears throat> nose like a cooker hood. Like, did you ever see there was a video of of someone made like a dance track to that? Someone I believe yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, somebody sent me a thing the other day from a shop in Hollywood. There's a, a birthday card or a card of me. It's my publicity photograph from UTV made into a greeting card. I should be saying. You need to be making money out of that. Excuse me, love. What are you doing? Yeah. The money, but yeah. you can't do that. You can't so, do so it. yeah, you had a. You mentioned the cooker hood thing, and then yeah, like a guy locally like made like a dance music track mm-hmm. and remixed your voice, and it was Michael over there. Very good. He remixed that. Can you? Can you play that for us in some way? A leopard never changes its spots, especially when it's got a nose like a cooker hood. <laughs> That just I, nose like a cooker hood is something I still use. I or use a tin opener, hood. nose like a tin opener. <laughs> uh, the, a couple of the women in Coronation Street had noses like tin opener. You know that nebby sort of nose. You know. Did did soap stars ever like? Did word ever get back to you that like listen? Uh, Liz McDonald didn't like that. Uh, uh, you know the the lady that played Liz McDonald. I did a couple of gigs with her uh, in Belfast. Uh, and we did, believe it or not, an aerobic workout up the Shankill Road. <laughs> Came back into Belfast, had lunch with the Lord Mayor, 
and then went up the Falls Road and did another gig. What and, a day! Uh, uh, my Lord Mayor's lunch was coming down my nose up the Falls Road when I was, <laughs> you know, twisting and pivoting into all shapes and sizes and legs in the air and everything. And your Lord Mayor's dinners, oh God Almighty, it was was hilarious. She was she's great crack, you know, Beverly Callard. That's right. Who's married to Big Jim McDonald? Yes, that's another story. Did you meet Jim? Oh, yes. Get on I've, well? I've done a couple of shows on the BBC with Jim. Yeah. How have they, <laughs> How have they been? Lovely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is it fair to say, like, you know, you get on with some people, you don't get on with others in life? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. V- very, very rarely do I not get on with people, but oh, he didn't like me. Oh, okay. We're, we're on the panel, and I was at one end, and he was at the other, and the people in the middle, and he started, he started jibing down at me. And I thought, I'm not going to rise to this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what else have we got there? Okay, we answered. Oh, okay, okay. Um, look, uh, there, genuinely, I think we could do 10 podcasts, and I could talk to you for such well, a I'll long time. Well, I'll always come back if you, ever, if you want me to ever again, I will. You come back. We'll have a couple more guests on. We'll have Robbie Williams... Oh, yes. Jim McDonald. Uh, yes. It'll be lovely. <laughs> we'll all be beating the living daylights out of each other. I'm just <laughs> like, I, I just love to think, like, what are you getting up to? Like, I'm like thinking after this podcast. You don't really want to know what I'm getting up to. I do, because it didn't disappoint. Because the other day we had lunch before we filmed that video, me, you and Dave. And, I, and Dave said to you, what are you getting up to the rest of the day? And you gave an answer that did not disappoint me in any way, where you said... You like in your bathroom to just have like a li- nice set of orange towels, but you're not really happy with the orange towels you have at the minute, so you were going specifically in the Belfast right. house, to of house of Fraser to buy yourself some new orange towels, and that is, I love that. I love that. That's exactly what I think you should be doing. In my head. Orange towels. You're out, you're out I call it shopping. a Garvaki Road bathroom, <laughs> you know, because it's, it, it's, it's got orange towels and orange mats on the floor. <laughs> Couple of guys yeah. trying to get in. Yes. <laughs> I will proceed down here where the are there now. Uh, Julian, I, I appreciate you coming on so much. I'd it's love been that. Very nice. Back. Thank you very much. And a lovely cup of tea. Thank you guys. That's lovely. Did you do you make that one? Did, what did you what did you think of the one I made you? It wasn't great. You poured it out? Uh, well there you go. Um Julian I wish I'd known this was being you look great. Camera. Makeup and hair, darling. Makeup and hair. <laughs> I'm like I'm pulled through a hedge backwards and someone's rubbed a fish supper all over my face. That's the way I feel. But anyway. <laughs> Julian, thanks so much. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. <laughs>